Today our theme kind of is here, let them in. Now go with the flow, uh, allow access where necessary, and obviously um, prevent it where we don't want people going through. So just to give you a little overview of the uh, platform here, we uh, bring up the slide to kind of show you where we cover. So we have the ability to not only manage access control, but the ability to tie in our intrusion panels, which gives you great command and control and user management. Uh, we bring in our communications platform, we bring in video, to giving you really one work environment to help bring all these systems together and uh, interactively be able to track down whatever your situation or, or event might be. So the access management system is a very comprehensive overall access platform. I like to think of it more of an integration platform at times, but it will work down as low as 16 doors or less, all the way up to 10,000 doors. It supports 400,000 card holders, 400 divisions. It will do 50 panels, intrusion panels of command and control, and up to 500 panels of user management. Um, simplicity is an easy three-step or three-package offering. Um, we have all the mainstream platform, or excuse me, mainstream features that you would expect to be in an access platform, except that many of them are inclusive. So we have your global line passback, mustering, random screening, man trap, guard tours, um, all those types of things, maps, there are interactive maps, they're all part of the platform. So there's not an extra license for those particular features. We do have licensing features in it, um, like visitor management and add-on, but a majority of those features you find as just part of the base. So you can use them if you like or not use them. It's really up to you. Uh, <clears throat> obviously, our high points here is besides the simplicity, our capabilities, integration to other platforms, the resiliency of the platform, and future-proof investment. We're going to kind of touch through those as we go through some of this. So here's your base packages. We have three bundles um, or packages, however you want to look at them. You buy these as a base license. They come with many of the features I've already discussed. You start out with a 16-door base. It can expand up to 144 doors, 1,000 cards, up to a maximum of uh, 200,000 cards, a single workstation, uh, division, and intrusion panel comes in base and guard tours. Now, these do come in different measures, um, but when you look at a package like this, just to know that you can use maps, badging, whatever else you might need, all in your basic platform. So then we step up to our plus. Obviously, it graduates to uh, 32 doors up to 512. Just a larger platform, more Macs, more, and I'll explain the Mac here in a moment. I, my apologies. Um, workstations uh, still comes with a base intrusion panel, and the guard tours, all of them have their foundations. Professional obviously steps you up into a larger arena. We're looking at 32 doors in base up to the maximum of 10,000. When we say doors, it's a little bit different terminology than you might be used to in the marketplace. A lot of access platforms, you buy reader licenses, right? So when we're talking doors, technically, if we say 10,000 doors, I mean 20,000 readers because a door for us is either a single direction door or bi-directional. So you're not buying them by a reader license, you're buying them by doors. How many doors am I going to have on this? So that's really a cost savings in it when you look at that because often you'll buy multiple readers to be able to do a couple of different ones. Well, literally, you're buying them by door. What do you need for that door? So it's very efficient. And the only expansions you really have to the platform is what's noted here. You're going to buy you know, the additional doors, your additional card holders, additional divisions. They're just add-ons or extensions to the platform, which makes it very convenient. And the basic uh, operation, the benefits and functionalities of the platform is how easy is it to bring things together. So when you bring in your data, you bring it into a single platform, and this platform allows you to obviously or not obviously, but it gives you the ability to bring this down into your intrusion panels. So you're managing your users in one place. You're issuing your code numbers for your intrusion panels, you're issuing your pass cards for the access platform, you're putting your authorities together, all your information, very easy to bring um, in to the platform, which is obviously always very important, right? Especially when your end user is you know, trying to get a thing uh, put together. You can put it in your HR system. Through Active Directory, you can bring that into the platform, making that data transfer easy. So just hitting again over some of the multiple functionalities uh, that are foundational, quite frankly, the global net passback, the random screening, man trap, mustering, all those, again, basic foundations into the platform. You're not paying extra for that just to get those features. They're there. The data transfer, 
Very simplistic, you can bring in from an existing system, you can export out of that system their database and import it into AMS. It brings over, pretty much you choose what you wanna bring over, but all the way down to their photos. So if you, their name, their addresses, whatever, you tell it what information you wanna bring in and you can import that then into AMS. So keep it very simple, very straightforward, um, and it's fast. I mean, that's, that's what it's kind of about, right? You don't wanna spend too much time messing around with this stuff. Divisions, um, sometimes uh, referred to as segmentations. Uh, so divisions, you have up to 400 of them. So you can establish 400 different sectors of a system. So maybe you have a group of client offices that uh, want to function underneath one group. Uh, I've got another building that's got to function underneath another group. And or you have an overlord. <laughs> You've got a security manager that wants to see everything for them. Or you can have them as completely independent systems that don't require that security overlord. They just run on their own, and so therefore you assign your people and manage your people individually in each of those divisions. So really nice system size to be able to support you know, a large building or even a campus environment, making it quite functional. So this is our three-tier architecture. Um, the thing I really like about this is it's a very reliable structure, and it's very comprehensive, and it's secure. So you think about it most commonly, you've got the first tier being your server, very common in most applications. We have our Mac. Our Mac is our master access controller. What our master access controller does is really maintain the operations of the system. So it's collecting information, it's passing up to the server, passing down to your controllers. Your controllers are passing data back and forth. If I lose my server, my Mac will pick up those activities. So I don't lose my global and I pass back I don't lose all my, you know, my, basically my global connections. My Mac will buffer the history of things that are taking place. So when the server comes back up online, I can upload that information. Um, then let's just say, for instance, so I lose my Mac. All right, that's a bummer. We don't like losing those things, right? We don't like losing our server, we don't like losing our Mac. But my controllers are capable of keeping the integrity of your system running because my AMC2 controller will not only hold the entire database if necessary of cardholders, all 400,000 of them, um, they will collect up to two million events individually. Then when your Mac comes back up online, your server comes back up, they will upload that information. So what does that really mean? Well, it means that in many cases when you lose a server, some systems still fall back to site codes, facility codes, right? Which downgrade your security. When you can maintain the entire cardholder database in your controller, that means that all my security, the integrity of my security profile for those users remains static. So that person that can't get into that IT room still can't get into that IT room. Even though he has a proper site code and everything, doesn't matter, his card is not allowed. So when you hold that security profile intact, the integrity of your system remains intact. Plus we have encryption and protection from the server all the way down to password protected controllers. So your entire communication stream is protected, which is also very important, obviously, in our, in our world today. Cybersecurity is one of the biggest concerns that happens, right? That's what we get to study and read about, is how people are hacking into everything. So as we move into the uh, user interface on this, we, we chose to go with a little softer background. We always hear or see the studies about how hard computer screens are, are on us. So we thought it was important to do our best to soften that effect. So we went with a little darker GUI, so you don't have that brightness to deal with. The icons are on the forefront, and, and you put these in here how you want to display them. You can change the background colors on them so they stand out one way or the other. Uh, so it's a very user-friendly, easy concept. It works on the same scheme as our Bosch video management system does. Uh, so we have some continuity there for you. And you obviously use the aspects of it you want to. It grays out the ones that aren't appropriate or, or excuse me, not relevant at the time. Uh, it will pull forward the, the ones you want to hit at that point in time. So with that, obviously you have um, your full floors, and these are just JPEGs, bitmaps, those types of things you put in there. We don't support the DWGs or things like that. You just take a snapshot of them and you can import them. So it gives you, the mapping in here is one of my favorite things about it because you can embed your map any way you like. If you get the opportunity to stop by our booth, and I would encourage you to do so, we can demonstrate for you how the maps can nest into one another. You can start out at a high 50,000 foot view and drill all the way down to a countertop 
if you so desire within it with all your devices and system pieces laid out in the system. And I can also drop into the menu tree and maybe I've got a pretty good sized facility. I don't remember where the server is. Well, I can go in and click on that and say, show it to me on a map. And it'll pull up that map and highlight that particular device for you. And that's true of any of the devices in the system. So it's really easy to move around and navigate through. It's very intuitive for its operation. And you have command and control of all those items that are there. If it's a door, you have the ability to lock it, unlock it, secure it. Um, you know, whatever your situation happens to be. You can also, and we're going to touch base on this a little bit, but have the ability to put a trigger on here to activate an event. And that event might be a threat level lockdown of some sort or just an action to uh, change a schedule on, on some, you know, preset determined setup. All can be fired and triggered from the map. We have swipe ticker. It gives you the ability to see who's passing through your doorways. So as they present their cards, it pulls up on the screen on the left, on the right hand side, excuse me, it's my left hand at the moment, uh, pulls up on the right hand side. And the really cool thing about this, besides the fact that it tells you um, access granted or not access granted or someone's trying to go somewhere they're not, you can pull this swipe ticker out and drop it off somewhere else on your screen so you can actually monitor and maintain that while you're doing other activities. So it gives you that ability to see who's coming through those doors and what's taking place. And of course, they've got the nice little green, yellow, and red based on what that event might be. Threat level management. This is a term that's been used quite a bit. Um, I always tend to find it to be a little bit of a stiff term, and in some regards, a little bit of a threatening term, because it's not always a situation. But let's just say it is a situation. So I have up to 15 different threat levels I can establish in here. I like to call them more like action levels, just because it is an action we're taking. But let's say it is a threat. You've got maybe a fire event that's taking place and you want to give directions for evacuation. You want to lock down doors that will take folks deeper into a facility, but unlock those paths to those safe places, those shelters. Well, I can trigger a PA system and give them directions for where they can go to find safe haven from the fire or exit the building entirely, whatever that happens to be the case. Again, locking down doors, opening up other doors that may normally be locked down um, for escape. Or the worst case scenario that seems to be is such of a talk these days, and that's an active shooter. Obviously a big concern, right? Well, I can trigger an active level that will lock down a building, put out announcements to take refuge or shelter in place. I can lock down the building. In building B, I can put out PA announcements notifying them. We have an active shooter in building A, lock down that building, giving them instructions on where to take refuge. So it's really on how you want to approach it. But let's say it's not really a threat. What if it's just a change in schedule? High school gymnasium, they got a pep rally today. Wasn't scheduled. Well, I can present a card, I can push a button, I can click an icon on a map, and I can now unlock all the doors that access the gymnasium, but secure those doors that go deeper into the school or the corporate uh, auditorium or boardroom. So it's not always a threat. That's why I kind of lean towards action levels as a term, because it's really, what do you want to do? What action do you want to take place? Uh, maybe it's a weather alert. Again, you just need to trigger a PA announcement, tell people where to take shelter at, or how to evacuate the building, what have you. Uh, so a very uh, handy tool, obviously, and very much a need these days for the way we uh, work through our systems and the situations that take place in our facilities. Because unfortunately, in the most unlikely of places, we have to deal with that at times. And you configure all these yourself. You decide what doors are a part of it, what you want to take place, how you want it to work, um, so very simple, very straightforward to set up. Visitor management, also a semi-popular thing, uh, depending on the size of your organization. This has come commonplace. We like a lot of touchless things these days, right? We don't want to be too engaged in having to, some places you actually had to give your fingerprint or what have you. Obviously, in a day and age where we want to be as touchless as possible, the interactions between folks, we have a self-login. You can come in, you can enter all your information, be handled by a receptionist, or maybe you want to give them pre-advanced uh, access to your facility. So you can send them a code, they show up, they go to a tablet or, or a, a Apple tablet or something like that. They put that code in, all their information is there, presents it, it can issue them a credential, the receptionist can issue them a credential, or what have you. Makes it very smooth, it's web-based, so it makes it very simple uh, to access and manage which obviously is very important uh, when we're dealing with those types of things. You know, what's the first impression when you walk in someplace? 
I know some places you go and there's just nobody there. What do you do? You know, uh, who do I call? Well, you have a little tablet there, give them kind of instructions, and then they can walk through their process pretty selfless or self-paced on how they want to execute that. We support all the means to do this. So maybe they, they, they walk up and they need to uh, have their driver's license scanned. So we support the scanners, have their picture taken, have a little printer, print out a little temporary badge for them. So there's lots of different ways you can approach it. So we're very flexible within that, uh, which is important when you're talking visitor management and the simplicity of it. And this really makes it very easy to accomplish those things. So this is kind of one of my favorite parts of the Access platform, uh, mostly because it's the backbone of it, right? It's how do we execute all these things. So the reason why I really like this, so my background is, I've been in the industry for 41 years. I started out as an installer. I've been a technician, an applications engineer, and I've had the great opportunity to install a lot of these systems. And you know, the biggest challenge with any system is how difficult is it to install? What, what are the challenges you encounter? How much labor time does it take to put in some of these devices? So our AMC2 controller, which is the one up in the upper left-hand corner, is a uh, DIN rail mountable, so super simple. I mean, it literally just clicks into place. It's got removable terminal blocks like a lot of folks do out there. And obviously there's a lot of other access platform hardware out there. Um, they've got these nice little screw patterns that you have to fulfill, right? This is how you can mount it into your enclosure. Uh, this kills all that because all I really need to do in any enclosure is put a DIN rail in and snap it in and I'm done. You can look at, we have obviously enclosures that we offer. We have a single DIN rail, dual, and a rack mount setup. Um, but you can put it in anything. Let's step beyond just ease of installation and we can look at the ease of servicing and maintaining the system. So you see a little window on the front of this and that's, that is one of my very favorite things about it, being that I've been a service technician. When I walk up to this, I don't have to guess what device I'm working on. I've got my IP address right at my fingertips. I also can find out what it's talking to, what IP address am I talking to, what the date and time is in the unit, what the status of my inputs and outputs are. I don't have to try and look for little lights to determine what's triggered and what's not triggered. Um, powerful feature. On top of that, I have the ability to manage my outputs and my inputs. Most access control platforms give you a fixed input, a fixed output for your door contact, your request to exit, right? I can program any of these to do that task for me. I'm not locked down. So if I use an input for one thing, but I don't use the other one, I can program it for a door if I want, for just a door contact. I don't, it's not like gone now. I have the ability to still utilize that, which is flexibility. Also on my outputs, they're not dedicated. I program them for how I want them to fire, right? But the really cool thing is I can take a jumper on the back of this board. I can flip that jumper for any individual input or output I want, excuse me, output I want. And I can now make that dry contact wet. So the power supply in the upper right hand corner is a 12 volt, five amp hour power supply by default. I flip a switch and it's now a 24 volt, two and a half amp power supply. I can put 24 volts into that control board right there. I can flip one of those jumpers and whatever jumper I flip or all of them, my output's now putting out that 24 volts to that lock set, all the while still sending 12 volts to my reader. So very flexible. If I put it at 12 volts, it passes through 12 volts. And I can do that individually. I can have a dry contact sitting right next to a wet, which is a really nice flexibility when you're not having to jumper through these things and providing power right directly out of the power supply. So those are just a few of the things that make them so powerful. The controller comes in a four reader or two reader model set by base for Wigan or you can do RS-45, which is the OSTP protocols. OSTP is coming a little more uh, popular since it's more secure than Wigan, right? Wigan's always had its issues. It's had the same issues that it had 20 years ago, but thankfully for this internet and the ease ability to get tools that can circumvent things for just a few bucks, it's become more sensitive of, of a situation. So we offer an OSTP that'll support up to eight RS-45 readers. So a lot of flexibility, ease of installation, we can do an expansion onto that. So each IP drop, if you will, will support up to eight readers, one being on the OSDP setup, or I can do the four readers off of the AMC2 with an extension module that can add another four readers. That's via 485. So obviously that can be up to 4,000 feet away from the panel. Um, and then I have input and output boards. I can put up to three input and output boards. I've got a 16 in, 16 out, eight in, eight out, and a 16 only. Um, so just flexibility, also off of the 485 that drops out of the controller. 
anyway. That's my favorite part of this because it is so robust. It's very bulletproof hardware um, and is cutting edge in, in, in so many ways above a lot of what's out there, which gives us that, that advantage. So this is one of our other superpowers, and that's our integration into our intrusion panels. So and I say superpower because it's exactly that. We have the direct integration into our intrusion panels can allow you to do virtually anything you need to really do. I can arm and disarm. I can bypass. Um, I can keep track of the status of those. I can create dashboards. And because I'm just putting JPEGs and um, bitmaps and those types of formats in here, I can build that to look any way I want. It gives me full flexibility. We have one project that's got 25 buildings coming into. And honestly, they're not even using the access in that particular application. They're using it just to manage the panels, manage all the users, and get full situational awareness of what their system is doing. So it's really um, a huge advantage when you have that type of integration and ability to keep track of what your systems are doing. The mapping on it, we have the ability to, again, keep track of your arm and disarm state. So in a green status, your system's all ready to arm. In a blue status, it means that there's something open on the system. It's not ready to arm, um, but you can tell that. In the yellow status, it's armed. And if you've had an actual event, it turns red. So it's very easy situational awareness. Plus, you have your events that can take place and come up on each side. And when those events do take place, uh, you can click on them. It'll take you right to where they are on the map, and you can identify what's going on. But you can silence the alarm from there. You can view all the activities that are taking place. Um, you can unlock or disarm a system for somebody that doesn't normally have access, but from your SOC or whatever, or um, the main station wherever you're supporting this, you can actually disarm the system for them and watch what they're doing. See when they open the door, see when they exit. Um, so it's really great situational awareness and deep integration into the platform. And then of course on top of that, we can expand that and grow out into um, other video management platforms. Right now that's BVMS and Milestone. We have others that we're talking to and working with uh, because Bosch's goal is to make it as easy for you to meet your customers' end needs as possible. So we're always working on the opportunity for integrations with other structures and platforms. And here, of course, you can manage everything from there. Data security, <clears throat> again, it's just a big topic. It's always a concern. So all of our communications are encrypted, and we do have encryption and control all the way down to the controller level. You know, most systems out there, you don't have any kind of lock in from the controller to the software. It's just you've made the connection and they're talking, right? It knows it's there, it knows it's not there. Well, ours is that whole communication structure. It not only is encrypted, but we put a password in the controller so it knows who it's supposed to be talking to. Can't be cloned, can't be um, captured or duplicated. Uh, very important in this day and age with all our security issues. So it's secure by default. We strict the authorizations. You have full control of the data. Who can see what? Obviously, you might have a, maybe you have a security guard. All he's allowed to do is monitor things. There's no control of anything else. Maybe he's only allowed to see certain particular areas of things. Well, you assign that based on a login. So it's very finite, detailed uh, security profiles, allowing you to keep a handle on who can see what and or where. So just to kind of do a, you know, a good look at what we have here, scalability. I mean, where do you want to start? couple of few doors. What, what's our, our, our marketplace? 80% of its 16 doors or less on norm. We can fit down there and very cost effectively and give you a lot of feature tools that you wouldn't normally have in that environment. And the flexibility to add, we've got how many systems? Like I was just talking with somebody formerly who they grew out of one of our older platforms and um, so they ended up having to replace that to go into a bigger platform. Well here you can start with a very small platform. Where do you want to go? I mean 10,000 doors, that's a lot of doors, right? So it's a pretty good sized system that can enable you to grow or stay small if you so desire with a lot of feature rich opportunities. Where do we fit? My slogan, if you will, has always been application drives everything. And that's the reality, right? What does your customer want? What do they need? What, what activities do they want to take place? Who do they want to let in where or not? And the reality is, where do you need them? because we can go down to that small little bank or, or convenience store. We have a system running in a casino. We have a system running in healthcare facilities. Um, we have them running in pretty much almost any environment you can think of uh, where we could fit, whether it's our small little four access door 6512 or up to our 32 door 9512 or 
10,000 doors. So we have full uh, coverage of the marketplace out there on how you would need us to work within that system. And the cool thing, again, is that marriage between the intrusion panel and the access control. You can do it even on the smallest of systems just to give them the ability to manage, maintain, and, and understand what their systems are doing. So where do we fit? I don't know. You name it. It's almost easier to tell you where we don't fit, which is, isn't much there either. <laughs> so it's an efficient operation, simple, you know, easy to use software packages, three primary choices with expansion from there, efficient operation, full situational awareness, um, high level encrypted communications, and we technically can do, um, you know, you have the multiple factors of authentication, right? So we can do single factor, dual factor, three factor, uh, we can even do three-factor with a duress code. Uh, that's typically accomplished on the OSTP readers, but that's pretty extensive, and it has been requested, um, which is why it's become an item of note, that uh, how, how can we do all of these and have a panic or a duress code along with all that? So if they present their finger, do their card, punch in their code, um, well, then they can also punch in a duress code. So everything looks normal, but they've actually generated an activity because we know those situations can arise. On the anti-passback, if you lose the master controller, is there a report to tell you if there were any anti-passback violations while it was offline? If, if you lose the, the server, if you lose the Mac, then you lose your ability across the network for it, but it will still work within, that, within the AMC controller. online what the violations were? Yeah, they should, it'll buffer all the events. So yes, that would come up when, they, when it re-uploads all that information. <laughs> Hello, uh, I see the black screen for the events. And uh, I'm used to work with BIS, so the configuration still be on, on uh, software for configuration, or you can do it now by the web page. Like the camera, uh, the doors, the group doors, and the users. So that is done, so all the main programming is done in the configuration manager essentially, where you build it separately. The map is really just your operational area. So when you're adding those doors, you'll just switch over to the programming side and then you can add them there. Okay, well if there's another other questions, thank you again so much for your time, we appreciate it. Bosch, invented for life.